Hello and welcome to this week's 1829 talk. Uh, you're very welcome. I am Professor Annie Tindley uh, and it's my honour to be one of the trustees uh, of the Natural History Society of Northumbria and to be introducing these 1829 series of talks to you. Um, the 1829 talks um, highlight and celebrate uh, the year of our foundation uh, as a society as one of the oldest uh, and most honourable uh, natural history societies in, in Britain. And the purpose of these talks is to allow a platform and showcase uh, for the most exciting and cutting edge new research being undertaken by our early career researchers. So they're here really to, to share with us the latest findings in environmental research. As such, I hope you enjoy uh, this week's talk um, and I could urge you, if you can, to follow us on social media, uh, Natural History Society uh, of Northumbria, and enjoy the talk. Good evening. Uh, my name is Dina Schwartz, and welcome to this week's 1829 talk on improving informal and outdoor science learning opportunities for teachers, students, and the greater community. I know that 1829 talks have historically been um, about ecological and environmental research. So I hope that you enjoy this week's take on um, research in the field of social sciences and how that can be relevant to the Natural History Society of Northumbria. Um, right now, I'm actually gonna pull the camera off of me to not only recover <laughs> part of the slides, but also in the hopes that this magnificent glare in my glasses no longer distracts either of us, really. But I'll come back at the end so that you can see me and um, yeah, we can conclude we can conclude the talk together. So in this talk, I'll provide some insight into my background as a student, professional, and a researcher. Then I'll be discussing the fundamentals in my master's research on bridging the gap between informal science education institutions and science teachers, and how that can be applied to the Gosforth Nature Reserve in an educational capacity with the greater community. I'll conclude with a reflection on the value of education at the Gosforth Nature Reserve, particularly in the context of Newcastle as a whole. And um, just for simplicity's sake, I'm gonna be referring to informal science education institutions as ISEIs, which, also happens to be a tongue twister for me, so, but we're gonna give it a go. So informal science education institutions is ISEI. So a little bit about me. Um, I am a recent graduate of Newcastle University where I studied my master's in international education with an emphasis on teaching and learning. Um, and I have my bachelor of science in ecology and evolutionary biology from the University of Arizona. And while I absolutely loved learning about science and nature, I found my real passion was in um, education itself, particularly in uh, the informal sector. And so during my undergrad, I got to be a science ambassador for my college of science, and I got to engage with the community on all different levels. And then I was also an intern in the education department at Russell Zoo, an instructional specialist at the University Science Center, and I had the opportunity to develop curriculum for a science and animal camp in America. Um, also during my undergrad, I had the opportunity to study abroad in Copenhagen. So one of my modules was children in multicultural context, and the other one was Arctic ecology. This photo here is actually of me sampling a glacial lake in Svalbard um, as a part as that of that Arctic ecology module. And then since moving uh, here to study, I have joined the Natural History Society of Northumbria and become a member as of March 2020. And then I've actively been a volunteer warden at the Gosforth Nature Reserve since um, July of 2020. In my master's dissertation at Newcastle University, I investigated how to bridge the gap between ISEI educators and formal science teachers in order to establish collaborative partnerships at the boundary where they interact. And fundamental to my study were two theoretical frameworks. First was the communities of practice framework, and second was the theory of relational agency. 
Um, communities of practice in the literature are defined as groups of people who share a passion for something they do and learn how to do it better as they interact regularly. The three fundamental constructs of a given community practice are, as you see here, it's the domain, the community, and the practice itself. In a given community of practice, the domain describes the shared domain of interest in which membership implies a shared investment in that interest that unifies them. The community describes a space in which members engage in joint activities and discussions in order to share knowledge between one another. And the practice refers to the group of people that share this repertoire of, of resources via their time as well as sustained interactions. When considering the science education of a greater community, it's, it's imperative to first understand the primary sources of education the community members may have. Most commonly, these sources of education are formal school experiences, as well as informal education institutions. And the overall outcome of a community's education capacity is reflective of the practices of their schools and um, their informal education institutions. Researchers have historically used the communities of practice framework particularly to address the disconnect in education practices between ISCIs and schools by defining ISCIs and schools as two distinct communities of practice. In this context, the ISCI's domain is considered to be educating the general um, public and school groups. Their community is within the institution itself and their practice consists of ICI educators and their institutional curators. Likewise, the school's domain is in educating its pupils. Their community consists of the school as an institution and their practice is made up of the teachers and the teaching support and the overall teaching staff. Research in the field has demonstrated that by working together, ISCIs and schools can provide holistic education opportunities for the community at all age groups and across all experience levels. However, my dissertation research, um, I demonstrated through a case study of ISCIs in Northeast England that the boundary where ISCIs and schools overlap is not necessarily best represented as an overlap of practice such as what you see here with a classic Venn diagram, which happens to be the way that many researchers in the field have assumed the relationship to exist. Um, so rather than this classic Venn diagram, um, the area of overlap that I found is not necessarily um, with one another as distinct communities of practice, but with the third space that qualifies as a novel community of practice consisting within itself of a wider domain, community, and practice, those three fundamental constructs. So in my research, I demonstrated the practicality specifically of using a digital platform as a virtual third space between ISCIs and schools in Northeast England. However, in practice, developing an operable digital platform that would meet the demands for success in this novel community of practice would take extensive research, um, most predictably as a action research project that involved the practitioners. So the ISCI uh, educators, curators, and the school teaching staff, as well as members of the community to ensure that this third space um, is a shared in enterprise and represents the, the needs and challenges of everybody present in this space. So from here, I'll demonstrate uh, how my research findings can be applied to establishing a novel community practice, specifically through the perspective of the Gosford Nature Reserve at the boundary between ISCIs and schools in order to address how to enrich the capacity of the community to pursue science education experiences. So going back to the three constructs of any given community of practice, my study demonstrated that the boundary can be a successful community of practice when it's established through a shared enterprise between ISCIs and schools. And this is where the theory of relational agency comes to a significant head. 
in that the theory of relational agency concerns how the boundary manifests itself as a third space through the confidence and capabilities of ISCI educators and science teachers to cross the boundary out of their institutional communities of practice and into this collaborative space. In the context of the boundary between the Gosford Nature Reserve and community schools, relational agency refers to the ability of both science teachers and the education staff of the Natural History Society to show up to and engage with one another in a shared space that is made present by a collaborative partnership. Um, and similarly, the relational agency of the greater Newcastle community can be realized through um, acknowledging and exploring the unique challenges currently being experienced by the population in accessing educational resources. So the findings of my dissertation research can be used to propose opportunities for the Gosford Nature Reserve to establish themselves as a key ISCI in the educational landscape of Northeast England. The study found that from the perspective of the ISCIs, it is not only imperative to have resources that promote relational agency, particularly among science teachers and community members, which may include professional development programs and lists of institutional activities, but also to make the information available through a cohesive interface, as well as um, provide access to community discussions and workshops and projects and the such. Um, another way the GNR can, or the Gosford Nature Reserve, excuse me, can contribute to the establishment of this novel community of practice is by demonstrating the relational agency of their education team to tap into community educational networks. A very unique aspect of the educational team at the Gosford Nature Reserve historically is that it consists of volunteers from very diverse professional backgrounds, each with an ex expertise from a unique like institutional community of practice. And these volunteers are key resources in establishing collaborative partnerships with schools and throughout the community. And the volunteer rangers of the Natural History Society of Northumbria have proven to be effective communicators and capacity builders of the society's member visitors throughout lockdown. So throughout lockdown, there's been um, heavy COVID restrictions which has required a consistent presence of uh, volunteer wardens at the reserve uh, in order to allow continual access for the society's members. And the volunteers that have been there on a daily basis uh, have used not only their presence, but also their knowledge and experiences to provide visiting members with a sense of place and belonging within the reserve, as well as the, the society as a whole. So with an effort to show up in and establish a novel community of practice on behalf of the reserves education team and local science teachers, the relational agency of the practitioners and the greater community will expand in response to one another and ultimately reinforce the practice of boundary crossing and open this community of practice to include more local but also regional and national ISEIs, school members and community partners as the self-sustaining cogs of a successful community of practice begin to turn. So that's all I have on this 1829 talk. Here I am popping back in to say hi. Um, but of course, this research, um, like I said earlier, is not necessarily ecological or environmentally focused, um, but I hope that this look into the field of social sciences and the role it can play at an informal education institution has um, been interesting for you as well as entertaining, and I hope that you've taken away something um, unique that maybe um, is a new experience for you with these 1829 talks. And of course, when we talk about educational practices or the potential of educational practices, this is, this is by no means the cap on possibilities.
the educational practices that are possible at the reserve um, are endless and I didn't even tap into the added variable of cultural differences that may be experienced in the Northeast or even just in the community that engages with the nature reserve. So if you do have any questions about my research or about the nature reserve or about the society or anything of the such, my, my email's here in the, in the presentation. So please do feel free to reach out to me. And um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed tonight's talk and thank you so much for being here with me.